Okay, this is an any percent guide for the game Jazz Punk. So, basically, when we start the game, it'll cut a scene or play, and if you wait a second, you just press spacebar and it'll it'll skip. So, time starts basically as soon as we get um, control of the character Polly Blank. Um, as you saw, there were like there was like a little animation of arrows going up the screen. You can actually walk whilst that animation's going on. So, if you want to start a time and walk through that animation, that's fine, and that's works for most people and that's what I do but if you want to wait for the animation to stop as long as you start the timer as soon as you start walking then you should be okay to go so I'm just gonna do that now but yeah so this first bit is just you just want to walk to the little office down there that you can see the light coming out of but yeah so basically our boss is through that door the closed one but he isn't kind of ready yet so what we do when we walk in she's gonna tell us to sit down and we need to sit down that row of chairs we need to sit down on the far left um, so when you sit down there's like a little timer as to when when you need when you can get up to go through a door when you're like safe to go through a door and um, although we've not quite figured out the timings for that yet what I use as a method is as you can see there's magazines on that little table over there so if you sit down and then look over look over to the right if you just spam, uh, okay, so the use key you can either press E or you can click, and it doesn't really matter which one you do. Um, I usually kind of <laughs> mix between both. I don't have a certain one. But if you look to the right of the magazines and spam click, you'll cycle through them all because you see they're like in a circle, and then you're clear to just spam click and then get up and then walk towards the door. So I'm gonna try and show that for you guys now. Okay, so we walk in, sit down, and then what we do is we just spam through those and then get up, and that's basically the best way to do that you just sit down yeah you just sit down look to the right and then cycle through them my loads are gonna be a little long because some reason jazz punk doesn't really like bandy cam or something I don't know so you just sit down look to the right and then stand up and then once you've done that you're okay to go over there so um yeah the, the, it, she says that there but basically I'm just gonna show you kind of how you do this although she didn't say that for a second when you have cycled through those you're okay to stand up the director isn't ready immediately as soon as you stand up but you're okay to stand up so when you stand up what you want to do is you want to go up to that door and kind of grind against it um... i'm going to actually just show you what you need to do okay so as you can see you can go round and sit on the chair or the faster way to do it is if you're grinding against this door after you've walked away from the chair you can actually click through this little gap and then sit down through the gap so Basically all you want to do there is do the little thing where you like sit down and cycle through the magazines, jump up and then grind against the door, and then go through the gap like this. So she's going to just stand there, and then as soon as the door opens you've got to like basically spam click or E, whatever you use, and then as soon as you, if you're grinding on the door you should just get through that little thing pretty easily, but um, yeah so that's that that's how you do the intro there's not really much to it it's not really difficult just cycle through the magazines and get through that is just kind of little things little small time savers okay so what we do here is when we stand up you're gonna be around here so you kinda wanna look to the left and then just start spamming click and then you're ready to go basically you don't really need to do anything here you can wander around if you want but you don't really have to Um. Yeah, so basically, I just want to say, uh, when I say spam click, um, if you, y it doesn't have to be click, you can press E if you want to, but I just, I'm going to say click for the sake of this tutorial, but if you want to uh, use E instead, then that's fine. I've gone too far already. <laughs> okay, so basically for this bit, we just want to get up there, so that window. And to get there, we need to use that elevator, but there are workers on it, so we need to get rid of them. So basically, all we do here is we just walk forward. Um, into this building and if we walk to the left as you can see there's a clock um, so this clock basically we just want to move this up to the 12 but this clock can kind of be a bit of a butt sometimes so you can move up to 12 but if it's like here that okay never mind so basically the clock has to be like pretty close to 12 if you have it too far to the left or too far to the right it won't kind of be enough like it won't you have to get it as close to the 12 as you can otherwise the clock won't accept it so you've got to basically just lift that up to the top 
well, make sure that it's close to the 12, okay. So let me do that, I just hold back and left, and then it will take me to like here, and then forward. Um, but you got to be careful for this bit, because when you go onto the little lift, there is a guy who's like a, a spy type dude, but you're a spy, so whatever. So basically, he will stop you and turn you around, which will stop you for a good second or so. So in order to kind of get past that trick, I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so I'll go over here, and as you saw, it stopped me there and turned me around. So the way to get around that is, what you do is you can jump over that little railing and click the button. So it doesn't work completely, because it, well it is consistent, it's just it takes a lot of practice to do every time. So you just kind of jump over and spab in the direction of the button. And forgive me if I'm doing awful, because I'm, it's kind of difficult to explain things and do them at the same time. So yeah, you still get, as you can see, you still get turned around, but if you press the button... What it is, is you're just going to press the button and then the lift will start going. And if you press the button before he turns you around, then obviously it doesn't matter that he turns you around because the button's pressed and you go in, so that's okay. But basically, yeah, you just want to go over and spam on the button. Okay. So, now this bit is called, um, I've not been splitting in form and elevate. Okay. So this bit's called the elevator skip. And basically, the game, when you save, the game doesn't like, um, doesn't like being saved in the middle of cutscenes, or well, basically that's it really. It doesn't like being saved in the middle of cutscenes. And I'm just going to continue and show you the trick in a second. So um, this is moving. I don't. For some reason, this class has a cutscene. Basically, um, it's a little bit weird, but that little bit up there, I took about 10 seconds. Classes as a cutscene. So if you save whilst you're on the elevator and then load straight away, you will skip the little elevator cutscene. That was weird. Okay. So basically. We do that. All you want, literally, all you do is save, and then load that exact save you just made. And then, as you can see, you're right at the top of the cutscene, and that's it. You just skip the little way going up, and that's literally the easiest thing to do in existence. Um, does it work? The way you can't go down. It's an up button. That's really kind of dumb design. Whatever. <laughs> um, so I'll just show that off again. It's not hard. I press save back, and that's fine. Um, how do I cycle across? There we go. Okay. I can't I couldn't see the next arrow because of my timer. So yeah, you just need to practice this bit. It's not that hard, but I'm just bad. Okay, so save. And then load. And you're right at the top. So yeah. So that's the elevator skip. So this bit is kind of a bit picky as to whether you want to do it or not. Um not everyone does it. I tr try for it because I don't know, I just like doing it. So when you go through this window, this happens. You do a roll. Which, to be fair, isn't actually that slow. Um, so I'd recommend just... I press save again back soon. I'd recommend just kind of doing that one, because it's not really... You don't waste much time, but... Just, it's just kind of something to know. If you come in here, and then walk across this little ledge, you skip the roll, and then the roll doesn't happen. But the only problem... But then it'll happen if you go, like, through the trigger. <laughs> Yeah, so going across this ledge just kind of walks around the trigger because the trigger's like around here somewhere. So basically, yeah, but the reason why that's difficult is because if you're going fast, you've got to come around. Jazz Punk has pretty floaty movement, and you've got to come around and kind of, yeah, you see what I mean? It's kind of difficult. You've got to come around and flick yourself to the side. So it's kind of difficult, and maybe it's just faster to go anyway. And I don't know, I'm not 100% sure where the trigger ends. So if you're walking this far out and turning, it might just be faster to go straight anyway. But I know that's really up to you. If you want to mess around with that, practice it, see what suits you best, then by all means go ahead. But I, I, although I use it, I personally would say don't do it. But yeah. So anyway, you just come back to the back, and then you just click anywhere on this machine. Most people click the screen, but for some reason I go for this bit. I don't know why, I just kind of always have. But yeah, so you just click anywhere on this machine, and it'll take you into here. Okay, so all I need to do here is... Why is there a cycling bin there? I never noticed that. Um, okay. So what we do here is... W w to activate this phone, we need to... Whistle in it, basically. And there's a whistle on this cereal. So you need to pick up the cereal, shake it, and put the whistle there. So, how I do it is I click the phone, so that the handlebar goes, and then I turn to the cereal. You need to click it twice, so they actually pick it up. And then I turn on the floor, spam click, and... That was pretty, and then the whistle should fly around. So basically, the whistle's a bit random where it goes, 
it could just go like in the middle of the pile, it could kind of go off to the right somewhere. So you've just got to keep an eye out for the whistle. Um, but yeah, so when you picked up the whistle, you just turn, whistle at the phone, but keep clicking. And then you just kind of, to get the thing, you just press 1. It's 1 to get the cartridge, as it says up there. So to get out of this, as you see, it says press space to exit. So you want to kind of press space um, and hold backwards, and then, so you're going backwards, and then kind of spin around in the air, like this. I didn't jump, but you know what I mean, so like that. So you've got a hold space, actually. Let me just go back and show you this stuff. Okay, it's whatever. You see, it's kind of difficult to do roll skip. Um, it's probably not worth it. Yeah, so you come in here, get the lid, turn, whistle. Like, you see, it just kind of went in the serial there. And then, so you just want to kind of spam space and then turn. That was even worse. So, yeah, so it should kind of look like this. And then you'll kind of throw yourself backwards. So you just spam space, hold backwards, and spin midair. Um, and then to keep your movement, you want to kind of grab this as you go. So you kind of look at it and grab it and go up. So like, it's not difficult to grab. Like as long as the circles there, you grab it. So you just kind of look down, grab it, look up, and click. And then you'll be back in here. And then you just want to walk back here. You want to try and it's basically what you got to do now is grab this painting and click on that little eye. So what you do is you kind of grab the painting as you go past, and then just spam click ready to get the eye. And then you're through here. It's matrix done. Okay, we're on the exit. So this next bit, um, you go down there and you slide. So what most people do is slide and then spin and grab the chute. But it's kind of not completely fast. That was wrong. Oh, never mind. That was right. So what I pref what I try to do is if you walk and then kind of walk sideways into it, when you come out of the spin, you're already facing the thing. So it's kind of like it doesn't really matter. You could do it this way, which is the way most people do it, because they're just going straight at it, so they don't have to slow down to turn. But I do it this way just because at least I'm facing the thing, and as long as I'm not too bad with my movement, then it should be good. But yeah, so that's that. Uh, I split there. I'm stuck in the. What? Okay, this. Okay, right. <laughs> that's interesting. I've never seen that before. Okay, so apparently I got stuck in the chute or something because the trigger's further down. That generally won't happen, just so you know. But yeah. So then we're at this koi pond. So basically, what you want to do when you get to the koi pond, you just turn to the left and spam click. It takes three breadcrumbs to get out of that little area, and then if you're fast enough, you can take a fourth one through and then throw it at the guy. But yeah, and then it's just the in intermission for ratio cop, which is fine. I'm just gonna take a drink. Okay, so with this bit of the game, you need to be super careful, because as you may have seen, he says I've got a landline to install and the pills appear The pills appear early. Whatever you do, when the pills appear early, don't take them, because you can actually, when you still sat down, you can grab the pills and you can take them, but what happens then is, um, let me just actually show you how to do this. So basically, when you stand up, you just want to turn right and then spam click. But when you sat down, if you take them while you sat down, this starting mission screen doesn't appear. And you basically soft lock the game. And three or four minutes into a run, that's kind of annoying to have, so don't do that. Um, so just be careful, wait until wait till he's actually done and you're able to stand up, and then just turn to the right and take them. Okay. So, um, basically, this bit, what I do is I walk up these stairs and then jump up these stairs. Because walking upstairs is slow. Um, which is why I jump, but if you've got if you can't make it in one jump, then your jumps get messed up. So as you can see, I'm spamming jump now and I can't I can't jump the second one, so it kinda gets all weird. So you can kinda do it jump halfway up this one and then you're not able to jump here. But I prefer to just like just walk up these stairs and then when you get to this bit, jump over here. Okay. So this bit is kind of a bit RNG, so basically you just wanna follow that road. Um, and obviously with it being a curve you want to stay as close to the inside as possible but these people like randomly walk around and stuff so they might get in your way in which case you're going to have to go around them it doesn't make much of a difference but they can get in your way and you need to be careful about that and polybank has like weird hit detection so sometimes you'll look at a gap think you can fit through it and you can't 
So you gotta be careful about that because you don't want to be getting stuck. Um, okay, so then then you just go straight onto the electric squid. That's just like a straight line, well not like a curved line, but there's no turns or anything. So yeah, so you go in here and this is um, intermission route. Okay, we're on spiders. So basically, you want to th uh, click to throw your shoes here. And then, ah, uh, that's an issue. I think I may have messed it up. You, okay, this bit needs timing, basically. I don't have any saves. Okay. That's fine, I'll just load the chapter. So, basically, when you throw your shoes at her, um, there's a jar kind of forward and to the right, and there's like a conveyor belt with food, and you need to collect five spiders. And, um, on the conveyor belt with food, one of the plates has a spider on it, and there's eight spiders total, and to get the ones we basically the to get the five fastest spiders uh, you see I kinda thought I could fit through that but I couldn't to get the five fastest spiders um, one of them is the one on the plate so if you're not fast enough that'll go around on the conveyor belt and you won't be able to get it so basically when you go in you wanna go like to the right of a head there you wanna grab that jar jump over here and spin grab that spider come over here and then grab both of these spiders at the same time so I'll now that I've got the one. So basically, you grab the jar here, the first spider is just here, so grab that, turn, walk over here, and then the pl there's one down there, and then there's one coming on the plate, so you can kind of grab them both at the same time there, by just spam clicking on them. So when you got this one, you're going to jump up here, and then walk forwards, but, so you can walk around this guy, but there's a risk of one, smacking into the wall, and two, this guy kind of can get in the way sometimes, because if he spins as you're trying to walk past him his arm will get in the way so what you want to do is kind of jump on the conveyor belt and then walk forward and then you grab this spider up in the corner turn left and then there's one down in the chair and then when you got those five spiders you just do a 180 come over here and just throw them in this guy's face because we're lovely and then you just want to walk past him over to the fugu you can get caught on his arm never mind they must have fixed that I don't know, it wasn't really a problem, I don't know why they'd fix it, but yeah, it used to be like they caught on his arm, never mind. So when you get the Fugu, you've got to turn around, walk over to a plate, and then click on the plate. But you've got to be careful to make sure you get the plate, because if you miss, that's how long it takes before you can shoot again. So if you miss, you lose about two seconds. So spin around, walk over, and shoot. And I missed, okay? <laughs> it doesn't happen very often. That's just the kind of bit you need to practice, because honestly, it's not that hard to hit them. Um, what you can actually do in the menus, I don't know if I can do it whilst I'm in game. You can turn on, there you go, you can turn on a reticle. Um, and basically, what that does is just puts a little dot in your screen. So, there's the Fugu bit, and there's a little bit later on where you need to aim. And maybe the reticle's better for that, but I prefer to have it off. Because I don't think it's necessary personally, although the last bit is kind of. We don't really have a setup for it yet, so it's kind of difficult. So you want to be holding D during that cutscene, so that as soon as you come out of it, you can walk out of that room, and then um, you kind of walk diagonally out of it, and then you're ready to just go here. So then you come around the front. He's in the women's bathroom, so just kick the door down, and then you just grab his kidney, do a 180, and just leave. So so basically, you want to be clicking ready, because to get out, you just click on the door. So when you're clicking ready, looking right at the door, and you'll get straight through it. Although I didn't for some reason. Okay, so this was RNG too. So what you do is those, as you see, the guys in the suits over there, they um, will come at you. And note that you can't die, so it doesn't matter. All they can do is kind of block you a little bit. But it's RNG based on how many of them spawn. There's those three. There's one guy that will always spawn who has a uh, text dialogue, and there's three guys behind them at the exit. So there's in total only seven guys that can spawn. Um, there is one other guy that has text, but for some reason he isn't actually set to spawn, like he didn't spawn for me the other day. But it's RNG, so you got to be careful. If they come towards you, you've got to punch them away with this. So you've just got to kind of take it as it comes. So we go down the right. Is that money? Huh, I never noticed that. <laughs> uh, how many times have I gone past this and I've never noticed that there's money there? That could have been interesting because if the cigarette could have set it off, I don't know. Okay, so these guys, this is really bad RNG, there's two of them, get wrecked, so. So, basically, you just want to, this guy, he says you're not going anywhere. He's there 90% of the time, but occasionally disappears. But yeah. But, note that you don't have to punch them all, you can just run past them. What happens if they come at you? They just stand in your face, nice. But yeah, the, um, that guy isn't spawn. But the guy that said bowling joke there on the left, he's the other guy that's set to spawn. So, there's the three that stand there, 
that guy over there that says ball and joke, not the guy on the right. And then there's um, not this guy. These three are all set. These five. There's five here. I completely forgot. So yeah. So for this bit, what we do is we just run to this guy, punch him out of the way, and then jump over the railing, and then we're into the um, intermission. Okay. Hold on. <coughs> okay. So for this bit, what we need to do is we need to get some fire for the candle, light some incense, sit down, and then hit a gong. What we can actually do is get the fire through the wall. So you just want to kind of, I might save here just to show it again, you just want to kind of walk up to the wall and spam click as you go past, it's not precise at all. Like let me show you how not precise it is, how unprecise, imprecise, that's it right. Like look, there's all of that space for you to grab it, well you can clip through the wall a little bit there. Like there's all that space and then after you get that, look there's two there. <laughs> like it's really, it's not difficult, you just need to kind of look to the left as you go. Yeah, it's really easy. So you just gonna kind of go like that, and then grab it as you go past, and then you just walk to the front. This bit's kind of weird. So what you need to do is you kind of need to light the incense, turn, and then just spam. Because when you sit on the pillow, it automatically puts your face in the gong. So if you light the incense, sit on the pillow, and as long as you keep clicking, you should hit the gong like straight away. So that's that's that basically. Yeah, and then we're just at the intermission. Um, intermission two. So. During this intermission, you want to be holding A, which is left, because it's going to go into like an Indiana Jones um, plane type thing. Um, so if you're holding left, it will start the plane thing and you'll already have started going left. So yeah, once you've done that, you just want to go down diagonally a bit. Um, you need, probably should practice yourself uh, where you line up to. I'm just going to go back on myself. A good place to line up to with a diagonal is where, um, whatever that, oh, what country is that, Peru? Chile? I think it's Chile. So you just want to line up to the, that corner on the top of Chile and then kind of go left and then um, you just keep going until you hit um, Kaitak Resort. Like that. So when you hit Kaitak Resort, take your hands off the keyboard because, oh, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, didn't do it. So what this can do is it can soft lock and what happens is it will it will go and then it will just randomly like this the game will load but it will be black like it will just be pitch black but you can still move and stuff like if you walk over to her she'll say a dialogue and stuff just it's black and you can't see anything and then when you press um, escape these little lines on the right aren't there um, all these all these menu options are gone it just says jazz punk up there on the top right left even yeah anyway but yeah so this is ticket skip and what this is usually we go over there and get our room ticket but the robot dude has to like burn a laser for us um, <clears throat> which is like really slow so we just come over to the right past the entrance over to the elevator um, hold on oh not re oh never mind I recognize this guy wait you're good at doing things hold on I just I don't recognize this guy at all I'm oh, pretty good at doing things thanks Pretty good at doing just one kenny percent guides. Get okay, whatever he's talking too much. Thanks for the compliment. Yeah, so we go over to room four, which is just on his right, like on his arm. So if you just walk in and aim at his arm, you should be good. And then just turn, ready to go out. So I just want to say this timing is going to be bad here. So that guy over there, because I stood around, he wanders up and down this wing. So because I stood around, he isn't there basically. That's only because I stood around, so if you walk straight up here, he's always going to be somewhere around like this bit. So when he, I'm just going to wait for him to come over to show you how it works. Is he going to come? Is he stopped? Why is he stopped? He's broken. He doesn't stop. Okay, so he should be around here. So that's our room basically, 405, it's the f second one on the left. Okay, he's coming. So you want to walk up to him and grab this ticket and his left arm. So walk, grab the ticket, and then you just turn, and then you put it in the door. So he's always going to be on that side, basically. You walk, grab the ticket, and then turn into the door. And that's just ticket skip. That means we don't have to get one from the downstairs, because the robot's slow. So that's ticket skip. Okay, banana Oh, this is going to be fun. So, um, like I said earlier, um, that is a... Dude, there's so little things I noticed about this game. Can I even... Can I interact with that? That is good. Anyway... Is that Spongebob's reference? Because of the flowers? I don't know. Um, anyway, so basically what... As you can see the phone's ringing. So 
that rings infinitely right. I'm not going to miss the call. Okay, I'm good. So, as I said before, the game doesn't like saving in cutscenes. Dude, this is a freaking awesome room. I'm not going to lie. The game doesn't like saving in cutscenes, and so, when we, we're going to grab the suitcase, go to the phone, turn and jump, and then we'll be stopped because there'll be a little cutscene. If you save, if you save and then load the save, the cutscene will disappear and it gives you another half second to jump. And then you save and do it again, and then you get another half second. So basically, I'm going to demonstrate it first and then talk about it afterwards. So we just grab the suitcase, go over to the banana phone. So we grab it, turn, and jump. And then basically what we do, save, load the save. And then as you can see, the cutscene stopped, and we have another half second to jump. This takes some practice. Usually, you can do it in three goes, but I don't always do that because on the, the third go you need to kind of land in line so that you can jump through the door and sometimes you don't always do that okay so as soon as you get over here you just put the lipstick on put the uh, wig on and once you've got the lipstick and the wig on as you can see the cutscene is still going but I can move around basically and you don't have great vision but you can just carry on with the mission and that's all you have to do so um, that's, that's, that's um, banana jump uh, it doesn't actually. None of these. I just want to say, the uh, the reason why the oh, that was an accent. These are such poor. Well, basically, I've named all these because no one else has named them. <laughs> so, things like ticket skip and stuff are just kind of generic names. Banana jump. Um, that's why they don't really have any fancy names. Some of them have taken inspiration from Dishonored. Like later on, there's bridge skip, which isn't even used anymore. But anyway, so yeah. So you grab the phone, turn, jump, save, load and then just jump. That's just all it is. You just save and load and then you get half a second and you just... Oh, that was good. So you just work your way to the door basically. Make sure you save every time. You can't just load because otherwise you'll keep loading like... You'll keep loading like back over there. But yeah, so you just grab the wig. It doesn't matter how much looks that you put on or where you put it. It just doesn't matter. But yeah, so then you go out the door and then... Oh, I have to click on it. And then you walk to the right back to where you came you don't have to take the elevator down because polyblank doesn't take fall damage so you just jump over the edge do a 360 or something yeah, just jump over the edge and then you go to the right into this little cocktail lounge um, so yeah but you want to be careful because there's gonna be a guy that'll turn you around and he'll slow you down for a second so you want to kind of jump through the doorway yeah whatever that didn't work so you kind of jump through the doorway and then it'll turn you around back here and then you're just closer into the room but it saves like not even half a second probably but yes, yeah, so then you just walk to the back of the room, come over here, and he's right in the middle, so you just click on the chair, turn, switch the case, and then just be ready to spam click, basically. Because he'll give you this card, and you just click to throw it away. So then, once you've thrown that card away, it'll activate a trigger for her to spawn. Um, so you just look at the cocktail, make sure you're holding forward for this bit, because when you're spamming E, you'll drink the cocktail and then get out of your chair, but if you're already holding forward, you'll be on your way, like, straight away. Um, I just noticed the if anyone saw, if you want to rewind when I was walking forward there in the doorway, that guy randomly. Um, there's a guy that like is watching you always, and he like we'll see him in a second because he's a, actually a friend. Um, but he kind of randomly like you'll just see him peek over a rock or something. Uh, it's pretty cool. But I just saw him then, and it was kind of weird and creepy. But anyway, yeah. So you just kind of hold forward, and then as soon as you when you're holding forward, as soon as you um, kind of get out of your chair, you'll automatically be walking forward. So yes, yeah, so this is uh, the night resort. Basically, what you want to do is just click to get out of the seat that you strapped in. Dude, is that blood on the wall? Whatever. So then you just kind of come out of this room over here. This room's weird. I don't like it. Um, ignore that. Smack this guy away. So you just want to come out to the right. I just realised that's. Never mind, okay. Um, yeah, so you come out to the right, and instead of jumping over there, you come all the way around, and what you want to aim for is, as you see, these tiles have colours. Well, the red one lines up with where we need to go. So you want to kind of, you can jump from the yellow one, and then kind of curl yourself round to land here. That's why I just slowed down mid-air, whatever. And then you should land down here. So, this bit has multiple ways of going at it. Some people just jump and kind of spin round like that, which works 
That's <laughs> that was actually pretty smooth. I'm not very good at it. What I prefer to do is kind of jump and go sideways into it. Um, so you can kind of jump and do a 360 and then go in. That's usually how it goes for me. If I do that way method, or you can kind of jump from the side, either side doesn't matter. Go this side too. Or some people just kind of walk in, but the problem with that is the whole floatiness. Like you can kind of just walk in like that, which is fine, but some peop sometimes you'll like go to walk in and then kind of float past it. That's fine. So you just come in here, and then this is the guy I was talking about that was hiding and stuff. Just click on him, chill out, um, and then let him talk basically. Um, yeah, so, but first, so you just want to be spamming, uh, use here, click, spam, click, if you're not okay with the whole click spamming, like if you have a nice mouse and you don't want to break it or something, um, then just use E, just press E, keyboard's less likely to break than mice, so yeah, he's just going to talk to you, keep spamming E, and then, because he says you need to give the thumbs up, and then, um, so you just spam E so that it gives, it gives him the quote unquote thumbs up as soon as possible. So here you want to hold forward and D and walk towards the couch and then just click on the couch. So you walk straight to the couch and sit down and then he's going to talk for a second. But yeah. I'm just going to take a drink. Okay, so you want to look kind of down here in the middle, and then be spamming click ready so that when it gives you the option to open to open it to pick it up, you can pick it up straight away. I'd love to see how Polybank sits down, but yeah. So you just pick it up straight away, and then he'll say Godspeed, Polybank, Godspeed. I've learned the uh, lines. Okay, so you want to kill the pig basically. The pig will sp the pig always is in the same place, but he moves around on like a track. So you want to look for him basically. He could. He kind of moves around in like a corner and then comes over here. So, where'd he go? So he could be back here, but that's like as far back as he goes. He could. He also can be like over here. This is the best place to get him because you smack him and then just take him straight to the fire. So basically, he just moves around in a little loop like that. He won't be like on the beach or anything or back there. It's always on this little road, but he just kind of moves around on a track. So you gotta keep an eye out for him. So when you spawn. Look over there, if he's not there, look to the left, and he'll be to the left somewhere. Or there. So, basically, you just want to walk up to him, smack him, pick him up. If you spam click on him, it'll kill him at the same speed, but you'll pick him up straight away. So, yeah, and then wherever you are, you just want to come, to, kind of come over this fire, and then put him on the fire. You have to be kind of, okay, I should explain this too. You have to be close to the fire. As you can see, the circle's there, and I'm clicking it, and nothing's happening. You have to be right up to the fire to place him, and then you just turn, and then turn that handle, and then you go over to the clam, and then just jump into the clan. Clan? Clam. Okay, so this is the wet works. So the wet works is just kind of um, a route you have to learn. There's not really much to the wet works, um, s kind of s trick wise. Something you can do, which is kind of difficult, and I've not learned how to properly do it yet, which is kind of bad. You can. Okay, so this door is shut. To open that door, you have to click on the butterfly and the door opens and you can go through. If you get enough height and enough momentum from this first jump, um, basically there it is, that's the one you go through. So you got to kind of go up and then turn. If you get enough height and enough momentum, you can jump over, that was bad. You can just jump straight over the door, basically. There's a bit of an invisible wall, but if you get enough height, you just go straight over the door and just carry on going. And you don't have to stop for the butterfly. So let me just try one more time. It's not worth like resetting over or anything like that, um, especially considering the world record. Okay, well, let's put it. I was, I was gonna say, ah, I almost got it. Whatever. I was gonna say. Um, well, I'd suggest if you don't get it consistently, I'd say don't go for it because you you then get stopped in midair and you have to kind of turn and then get the butterfly, so you kind of lose a second. But unless you go for the world record, doing that trick isn't gonna make much of a difference because um, the world record is like a minute. Close, a minute better than any other good record, good time. So the world records are really difficult to get. So yeah, but anyway, you can do it. That was never gonna work. Works anyway. Okay, whatever. But yeah. So you just get the butterfly again. This is just roots. So you turn, 
you go right here and then you turn again and you kind of slide a bit you want to avoid the people you agree with me and you just go up and then sometimes there's two ways to go but you it's always the same way like that's not going to change going over there quite clearly leads to nothing like look you come over here and it's just this holy crap I'm so sorry okay so yeah but that's it just a joke nothing but a joke <laughs> anyway yeah so you just when you come up here you just kind of go across here to the right be careful about this guy he kind of gets in the way and um, you can zip him up but you will just waste time come up here and then just turn to the right so when you come up that bit you want to kind of come up and then kind of go in a curvy fashion so you go straight into this one um, and be careful you don't go in that and then you just want to go straight here and up again if if there's ever up or like right you always want to go up that leads to nothing also um, I'll just this one's kind of misleading sometimes because it actually has two ways to go but there's yeah there's nothing there's not even there's like a, a reference or something that I don't get because it looks too sciencey for me so yeah so when you come up when you come up this damn I fell off <laughs> so when you come up this bit with the the button which you don't need to press because it just oh no you can be all broken oh no uh, oops I'm stuck yes yeah, so you just go up here the what works isn't difficult you just is what there's only one way you can go to the get to the end so you just gotta learn that way and then dog oh, Oh, but you don't have to click these, by the way. I just like it. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. Anyway. Yeah, so go up. And then this is the last bit. You just want to turn here in the curvy fashion again. This door opens by itself. You don't have to click anything. So, yeah, you just turn around. And then... So, I wasn't ready to do that yet. Okay. So, this bit, you can kind of see in the middle of the circle. Circle is like a table. Uh, on the table is a computer. And to the right of the computer is a coffee. You want to click on the coffee. So, when you come up here you want to kind of aim as close to the coffee as you can so you want to kind of be careful because you can shoot right over it and end up like back here fortunately you can't actually fall off this um, but or you could like undershoot it and end up like here it's actually really difficult to tell so it's kind of luck but um, yeah so you want to kind of click on the coffee and then this will happen so that's the way it works and then here's the other intermission so you actually have to do something in this one Hold down W so that as soon as you come into the game, you'll start walking. Because um, don't forget, you can walk through that little animation as well, just like you can walk through the arrow one. So here, you just turn right, walk. Oh, I got caught. Walk straight past her. She's not real. I can boop her over, can't I? No, I can't. Yeah, okay, walk straight past her and then turn, and you can use that same trick again. And then click through there. And if you do it fast enough, the door will stay open. Okay, so if you if you do that kind of if not fast enough, the door shuts behind you, and when this guy's done talking, the secretary who just then when it, when he said on press the secretary, she'll burst through the door. Not the actual secretary, but the wooden thing will just kind of fall through the door. Um, and then when this guy sets on fire, she'll set on fire as well. But if you're fast enough, this isn't like a trick, by the way. This is just something interesting, noteworthy maybe. If you're fast enough and the door stays open, then she won't fall through the door. So, I don't know, it's just something to note, I guess? Okay. So, earlier on when we did the first elevator skip, where we save and load, um, in this elevator, let me just save and, like, not load. Actually, I'll just reload the chapter. So, as you can see, oh, it does that sometimes in this elevator. It's weird, the sensitivity goes all messed up. As you can see, that elevator is slow. So, what we want to do there, I'm just going to reload the chapter so I don't mess up my loads. Mm, it is actual pad. Yeah. So basically, what I want to do here is save, load the game, and you'll be at the top of the elevator. My loads are being slow, and then just ignore the fact that it can lag here, and it can also sorry, I kind of shout with the word lag. It can lag there, and it can also slow give weird sensitivity. But yeah, so you just save and load, and you'll be at the top of the elevator. And come over here and just let him talk. You can get on top of his head, which is pretty nice. And apparently I can't do it. Oh, there we go. You have to click. I forgot. <laughs> well done, Reese. Okay, yeah, and just kind of walk this way so that as soon as he opens the door, you can go in. So he wants you to go over there and exterminate all these chaps, which you don't need to do at all. Whatever. He can sort the rest out. So what you want to do is you want to come over to the right and grab the remote that's on here. 
I did all it. Okay, and then you can grab it over the sofa. And then as soon as you got the remote, um, this is an interesting little glitch. Hold on, I'll show you this. There we go. So if you, yeah. Um, basically, if you click on them, they go fuzzy for a second. But if you click on them fast enough, they get stuck that way forever. Which is funny, I guess. Yeah. So why is it going to light? So you grab the remote from the sofa. As soon as you grab it, you turn. And then start spamming on this thing, and then the director will come down, and then get ready at his stomach to just spam click. So the cutscene starts, and um, basically that's the cutscene. So that's the remote. You just turn and then click on, spam click towards the thing. But yeah. So the cutscene's kind of long. It's a couple of minutes long. So I'm gonna pause and come back when it is done. So never mind. I don't have a pause hockey yet. Okay, hold on. I can. Okay. Yeah. So see you in a sec, guys. Okay. So the cutscene isn't quite done yet. Let me just carry on the timer. There we go. So the cutscene's not quite done yet, but he'll say I challenge you to a game of sport and it'll take you up here. So this is golf and we're working on a way to break golf currently, but we need old versions of the game, which is not entirely easy. Um although there's a way to do it with Steam by just doing old versions in, like in the beta section, but it's kinda weird. So yeah, so once he gets a home run, basically be ready on the queue and I just wanna I kind of want to. Oh yeah, you need to click on the bottom of it, not like the middle. So yeah, so this is just like golf, really, with snooker, snooker golf. So you just want to get the ball in the hole as fast as you can. I guess that's like that uh, every day. Am I right, lads? <laughs> that was really poorly executed. Okay. Um. Yeah. So you just get it in the hole. That was. I'm taking my time because I don't know why. Actually, it doesn't really make a difference. It doesn't make a difference like in how many hits you do it or anything like that. Just do it. Um. This is a fun little glitch, actually. If you stand where the director is going to stand, um, he's... Let's see if it does it. It didn't do it. <laughs> I'm stuck in his head. He... He's on a path, basically, and you can't obstruct that path. So, um, most games like this, if you get in the way of an NPC who's on a direct path, you'll, like, fling the NPC out of the way. But in this game, they were smart about it, especially considering they're on a freaking rooftop. And they made it just so that you'll get moved out of the way. Okay, it almost happened. Basically, it can fling you up in the air, and it's funny. <laughs> but yeah. So we're working on a patch. Not, we're not working on a patch. I'll take it back. <laughs> we're working on... This is just all generic. You've just got to learn the little the route or whatever. Um, it's not really a route. you just got to learn where to hit. So what we do, basically, is... We don't do it yet, because we've not figured it out. What it is, is as soon as we've hit the, the the tennis ball, we switch weapons, Wep weapons, items, whatever. And then what that means is it breaks the game, for some reason, into thinking that we've, that we're ready for the next hole, basically, which is kind of weird. So if we get the first hole in like normal, when we switch, if as soon as it goes in, if we switch our queue, and then kind of just cycle through until we have it back, we gain the ability to do the second hole, even if the director's not done it yet. So, no, I keep going with the director, the editor. Um, even if the editor's not done it yet. So, but the ball's invisible. So basically, we can do that and play the second hole, and then switch it again, and then play the third hole. Um, but it's invisible, so you just gotta kind of look around for the ball, which you can sometimes lose. Um, but yeah, so basically that's what we're working on. So. Uh, if you guys kind of like mess around, if someone wants to do that, then go feel free to do so. Uh, mess around trying to get an older version of the game, um, and then just after you hit the golf ball, just cycle through your weapons until you get back to the queue, um, items, whatever, and then you can hit the next one and then do the same, and then hit the third one, and then you skip the golf basically, because you can well you save about 10, 15 seconds, so it's definitely worth working on, but we've not quite mastered that yet. But yeah, so basically when you're done, you want to kind of come over here and just jump up this, because why not? He kind of gets a bit weird, um, you can jump over here. You can stand by this thing and be ready to get in it, but sometimes his dialogue doesn't activate. So you've got to kind of go up to him and click on him for his dialogue to activate, which is a bit weird. But yeah. So we go for the blue one, because it means that we can g go past the editor. If you're behind the editor, it's very difficult to take him over. Um... Do I have a load close? No, I don't. Okay. Um, it's very difficult to take him over. So we go on the left, uh, the blue one, and basically you just want to go left straight away. Uh, take him over and just go to where the arrow is. And then you can start the gravy race early. So when you get out, 
just turn to the left, go over to this table, and you just put the gravy granules in here, and then just start the race, basically. Pick up the remote and start the race. So this is gravy race. So, for a decent... You just control with the wasad here, by the way. I think, can you use arrow keys? Oh, you can use arrow keys as well. Okay, well, that's something. Anyway, so, this... I stopped there. <laughs> I just let go of all the buttons. So, this is something that is just like an 8-track, but... You could probably do with practice in this because a, a decent time for this, a good time is 46 or 47 ish. A decent time is around 48, 49. So that's kind of what you want to be aiming for is probably like 48 or 49, sub 50 basically. But like if you get like 46, then you're pretty good. <clears throat> so, but I'm pretty bad at it, so I get like 52 and stuff. This is going okay, but I usually mess up once per race, that's like the rule. Um, like I'll smack into a wall or something. You've got to make sure that you don't smack into a wall because if you hit a wall, it slows like all of your speed. Like you'll drop down to like 10 kmh. Kmh. Yeah, that's right. 50. So that was a pretty solid run, and it wasn't even sub 50. So you've got to be kind of pretty good at that. It doesn't matter whether you win or lose that. Just, just go and then try and get as fast as you can. So you come over to your car and be ready on the steering wheel, and then try to overtake him by just kind of going straight for it through the hoops um something to be aware of you don't have to go through the hoops they're just kind of there as a joke i guess um which is pretty good but um you don't have to go through hoops basically you just go as long as you get to the arrow it doesn't matter um so on that car bit you need to be careful because um you need to go pretty fast basically because he can actually drive right into your path and just knock you out of the way which is a little bit annoying and loses a few seconds, so just be careful with that bit, try and go fast. But yeah, so just walk up to the Virtuoso bit, um, and then be ready to put it on as soon as he walks over. So, um, this is uh, Virtual Tennis, oh, I've done golf, I've uh, done cars, done gravy race, done cars too, okay. <laughs> um, I just had them there just to remind me in case I forgot anything. But um, yeah, so basically with this bit, as soon as you start, this is tennis, but there's chairs on the left. If you go up to the chairs and pick them up and smack him, uh, you win the game basically. So what we want to do as soon as this starts, walk over to the left, pick up a chair, and then walk onto his side and smack him. So I'll try and show it here. Press any key to get okay. I've actually not tried oh I glitched. So yeah, you just grab a chair and smack him basically. And you'll win. You just need to smack him once. So you'll be on this side, walk over to the left, grab a chair and smack him. So Okay, basically this guy's weakness is um what's his weakness? I forgot, I forgot the word they use. Whatever, so basically, modesty prevents him from dying. So, when you give him the six awards you can find, when you give him all six of those awards, he'll blow up into a balloon and then you can pop him. Which doesn't make sense, because if he turns into a balloon before you even give him any accolades, so you can kind of just pop him straight away, really. But um, anyway, so as you can see, he's got ego meter. So what we do now is we turn, come over here, so the first accolade that we grab is this trophy, which is by the stand over here. And then we come over here, and then these are the second two. So I just want to see if he turns into a balloon straight away, because I've never looked. Yeah, he turns into a balloon straight away, so I could pop him now. Anyway, so then we come over here, we grab this one, and then if you are too high up, you can't walk up the side of this. But if you walk on the bottom step, you can walk up the side. But you've got to be careful that you don't kind of get stuck on this one. It's kind of difficult. You've got to kind of walk on the corner as opposed to the actual side of it. But um, yeah, so basically we grab this, turn, and then kind of come up the stair there, and then grab the flowers. It's kind of difficult, but you just got to be careful that you don't kind of walk on the corner of this one, on the middle step, because it has like weird collision. But yeah, so grab that, turn, go up here, and then grab that, and then just come forward. So in here, straight across, there is a medal on the table, and then spin, and then we walk across the front here to this table grab this champion heavyweight thing and then grab the tiara and then we just come back out through here to him so basically this is difficult because you can soft lock the game if you if you just give him to them and give him to them if you give them to him and give them to him and give them to him and give them to him really quickly he will basically it takes about half a second for his ego meter to fill up so if you give him two um, accolades in the time when it's filling up once then the second one won't count and fill up and then the game soft locks and you're stuck forever and there's nothing you can do about that because you don't have any more accolades to give him so you'll you'll be on the tiara so basically what you want to do is time it so that you click and then by the time 
you've switched out to your next one, you'll be good. So, if you do the tiara first, every time you're giving one, you'll have to cycle past the little gas thing. And then, yeah. So, okay, here's a little... So basically, yeah, just do that. Um, every time you have to give him one, you'll have to cycle past the little exterminator thing, which um, gives you enough time that you can give him the next one. So, earlier on, I did um, the save load glitch, which takes you to the top of the elevator. This is a, a different... This, this is playing off that glitch. So we pop him. As you can see, a bridge spawns over there. Um, basically now, if I save the game, this is really broken and then load that very save for some reason it takes me here so let's just let this load it takes me here to the elevator for some reason be because we did the save load before so and then we just come in here and as you can see we can free the director which is great so if you don't do the elevator skip at the start you won't be able to do that so if you think your loads are too slow and it's not worth doing it do it don't do the first elevator skip if you think your loads are too slow but do the second elevator skip because it skips the bridge basically and that is worth enough time because if you don't do the elevator skip at the start of this mission you don't get that won't work basically but if you think your loads are really that slow and you have to walk over the bridge if you walk over the bridge backwards your movement basically when you're walking over the bridge for some reason your movement speed is halved um, and if you walk backwards over the bridge like if you reverse over it 25% roughly 25% of your movement speed is gained back from walking backwards over it so if you are gonna go over the bridge reverse over it for some reason but yeah but really you should do this little um, save load thing can I come out of this yeah I can so because I just want to show you this bit so for this bit as you can see it's through the direction of crockification croc either way it gets crockified you want to click crockification because if you click this as you can see it takes a second because the note has to fall off which and it falls off slowly so basically what you want to do here is click crockification okay oh yeah I did that work okay so basically at any point you make a save it'll just bring you back there which is really broken but yeah so if you click on crockification the note doesn't need to fall off and it saves about half a second but yeah and then just like get ready in his mouth to just click in his throat Sounded a bit weird, maybe, to some people. <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, and then you just go in his throat, and we're in crop guts. And here, there's only one major thing, and that's right at the very end. So, it automatically turns your left here. So yeah, so you just kind of walk on the right-hand side here, because it's a little bit faster, because of the corners and turns and stuff. So, you just kind of... I like to hop along the side. I don't think it makes any difference at all. But yeah, and then you just walk onto the left side here. Uh, an interesting little glitch which isn't useful in the run at all um, okay but actually let me explain this first so if you walk forward you just spam click and you'll slice through all this you can actually skip the trigger that gives you the machete but that means you have to walk through the forest and that's really slow so don't do that in the speedrun but anyway so whilst you're sliding down the the croc guts if you save during that little animation and then and then if you save during that little animation and then lo if you save and load, that's it, you save and load during that little animation and then come anywhere in the crot guts and then save again and then go back and load the load at the start of the game your camera will fly I explained that all wrong didn't I? Okay, ignore everything I just said when you're sliding in through into the crot guts, if you save and load there and carry on going and then walk to the end if you come to the end here and then save and load here your camera will be all the way back there and it'll, it'll just, the camera will basically just fly through all the walls to your hair. So it's just a little glitch you can look at. It's not really useful in any way in the speedrun, but it's nice to look at. Okay, I'm going to save here because this is really difficult to explain. So basically, when we come in here, that's going to start talking. And it talks for about 10 seconds and then offers, offers us pills. We can get those pills straight away, saving about 10 seconds. So what you want to do is come as far into this corner as you can where the chair and the table are and just look kind of at the top right of where that little the little actual thing that dispenses the pills like the purple thing if you look at the top right of that you should be able to get the pills um it's really difficult there you go okay so i got the pills early there and as you can see they're not out yet so i'm not going to take them yet just to show you how it works so as you can see he's still talking okay now it comes out so that little purple thing if you aim at the top right of that you can get them and then you get them early 
so it saves some time, but it's really, if you get it first try, you'll save like 12 seconds or something. Okay, damn, I thought that was going to happen. It did the stupid... <sighs> okay, that, oh, there's the glitch. <laughs> okay, there's the glitch. So, I guess I messed it up. So if you save anywhere in the crop guts, I guess, whenever you load that save, it'll fling you through the walls. Let's look at that again, actually. It's kind of fun. I've not actually done it yet. I just, Rebcar was talking about it in a video. But yeah. So you'll just like fly through the walls basically, which is nice because it goes around and round and curve, so it's like a straight line basically. But yeah, so you just want to come through it. You're gonna need to practice this bit because even I've not got it down yet. Okay, there you go. See, I got it a lot earlier then, so I saved probably like five more seconds compared to last time. But that bit you just kind of need to practice. Um, this is the bit I was talking about where I was saying maybe you want the reticule on. That's really good. Um. I don't think that's useful in a run though, because we'd have to have a save set up, which wouldn't really work, but yeah. I'm gonna, um, I guess if we were allowed, I'd have to talk to the community about that. Maybe we'll allow that to s set up a save here beforehand, maybe, I don't know. So this is the reticule, it's just a little dot, which is nice, I guess. So there's no real place to line up here. I take it back, there's a real place to line up. So yeah, if you have the reticule where you want to be aiming for this, Okay, I didn't want to say anything because I wasn't sure if that was a. Pl I used to play with the reticule, but I wasn't sure if that was actually a thing or I just made it over my head. So you want to aim where this little dot is on this corner. Aim a little bit to the left and above that, and then you should be able to get it first try, basically. And then time ends there. As soon as the simulation thing pops up, nothing you can do after that simulation ends pops up will change the outcome of your. Okay, we're done. Will change what happens. So, basically. You can end the time after those five seconds, but you're just gonna be adding five seconds onto your time, really. So, so you see, you can jump around all at one, but it's not gonna change anything. So I'll say now when the time ends. Now, so as soon as that little simulation ends in three to four, that's when that's when time stops, and that's the run. So I guess that's it. So that's Jazzpunk. Um, that's Jazzpunk any percent. Y yeah, I hope you can do anything if you haven't I hope you can do anything great if you have any questions or queries be sure to ask them in the comments below um, down in the description I'll put a link to my uh, the Jazzpunk leaderboards which I run so if you do get into this game be sure to submit times there um, I have the email on, on the leaderboard so you can see that but I'll just put the leaderboards there in the description as well but yeah that's that hope you enjoyed and um, yeah so have fun learning Jazzpunk I guess